Hello there, and welcome to the Subconscious Healing Method. My name is Chris Chambers from Canada. And uh, last year, I was inspired to put this healing method together. I'm a body code practitioner, and we have several body code practitioners on tonight who are also doing the Subconscious Healing Method, or SHM for short. And we're going to talk tonight to uh, these wonderful folks who are We've been using it for, for quite a while now, and uh, they're going to tell us uh, their experience with it. So the first one who was on tonight was Rhonda. So Rhonda's <laughs> from Maine. And uh, hi, Rhonda, tell us about your SHM work. Well, I have so many experiences to relate, but I'll give a couple of synopsises of the few most recent. Okay. Um, I've been a body code practitioner for about six years. I've known about the body code and the emotion code for longer than that. And I've been doing holistic health personally for about 20 years. So um, Chris and I, we've been working together for five years now, maybe a little bit more than that. About five, Um, as, as I recall, yeah. Yeah. And so when the subconscious healing method, you know, was presented to us, it really truly was just an inspiration um, and an avenue for all of us to help our clients even more. So, um, most recently I've started using it on animals. And, um, so I work with, um, a number of rescues, zoos, uh, facilities that house wildlife rescue animals. But I, I also work with a very large number of race horses. Kentucky Derby, even racehorses um, in a breeding facility there. And I hadn't really tried it too much on a lot of the racehorses, but I had one mare in particular um, that I've been working with for a couple of years now in her most recent foal. Um, she, her personality changed and she became violent towards anybody that would try to get near her or her baby to the point where she broke one of the trainer's wrists when he tried to come near her. And so um, this was a horse that I had worked with for a number of years. I've done emotion code with her. I've done body code with her. I've worked with my AO scan mobile unit, working with frequencies with her. And so um, her owner um, was very concerned. These horses know what the process is of breeding and when their babies leave, what, what's going to happen to them. Horses are, horses are very aware of the whole process of the events. So she was hyper protective of this baby in particular. And she I wasn't, wasn't going to let them take it away. Wasn't going to let them take it away. And, you know, and, you know, working with the body code, there was a lot of messages there that I was able to perceive, like, don't take my baby. You better stay away that type of thing. I wasn't sure. really making a lot of progress with her. So I was just like, maybe there's something in her subconscious that will, you know, help alleviate some of this stress. You know, I bear this sort of, you know, juxtaposition where I want to help them, but I, I know what the process is myself. Um, so I started, was there a secondary subconscious? Yes. Was there something stored in there that we could help Um, integrate, empower, activate connection. I did the whole process with her. With animals, I will say this, it's so much more simple than it can be with humans. Humans, we can complicate things sometimes. With animals, it, it flows very easy. They seek balance. Mm -hmm. They don't like all this chaos. You know, they don't depend on these you know, these compartments and these ailments, you know, they want to be balanced. So working through her with her was very, very easy. So we we worked with all the steps very easily. She had a processing time period. I checked her a couple of days later. (laughs) The email that I got back was, it was like, I don't know what you did to her. um, But this is the result. She is calm. She is quiet. She is, she was even, 
she was even having issues with her own baby. She was so protective of it that she was almost like scaring it away. She's nursing beautifully. Um, the, the whole, um, the atmosphere of the barn that she was in had changed. Mm. She was so hyper that the atmosphere in the barn was chaos. Yeah. Even yeah. the area around her was quiet now. Um, and the owner came back. The owners and the trainers sometimes are, are in separate locations, but the owner came back to me and she said, um, we've decided to bring her to the home barn and she gets to keep her baby. Oh, sweet. For two years. They won't be separated now for two years. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, and so I checked on her coincidentally today. And I, if if I could just read the session notes, it is like a completely different animal. Mm. She's so quiet. She's so calm. Her Everything about her energy is different. And I just think how fortunate we are to have had this method in particular to work with this animal in particular, you know, it doesn't change the world, but it changed her world. Yeah. 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 That's, that's the thing that we should, we should say to the uh, person who's not too familiar with our method that we actually get into the areas where the trauma energy is stored in the mind. We get, we go right there and we release it. And yeah, you know, uh, it, it makes a big change yeah. uh, very yeah. quickly, you know. In this like was this, this horse's, this was her fifth baby. Yeah. And she knew what happened to every single one of yeah. her babies. I work on some of her other babies that are now racehorses. Mm-hmm. And she absolutely could not stand letting this one go. Right. And enough now she was doesn't enough. have. Yeah, yeah, enough was enough. She just, she broke, yeah. you know, they broke her. Um, and now she's not broken anymore. And it's just absolutely beautiful. I mean, I, I do this with a lot of people too, but this was my first real, you know, like big animal experience. And yeah, um, yeah. I, I just feel so full of gratitude, you know, for the mm-hmm, method, mm-hmm. but for the horse, you know, and for, you know, just, yeah. just all of it all together. It was a beautiful, beautiful experience. Thank you. Do you have a, a human story? I do. I do. I have a couple. I have one in particular that stands out. It's a, um, you know, a man that I've been working with for years. He came to me originally um, looking to um, for fertility issues. Um, And it was, it's always a much bigger story than that. Um, And so as we worked our way through the whole process, it was, um, you know, week after, well, we've done one, two, three, four sessions so far. Um, and, you know, he writes back every week and he's like, you know, I can't believe how much better just my marriage is. Fertility, that was kind of a side issue. He's <laughs> like, but my, my marriage, my marriage has improved. And he's like, and I'm, um, I'm not running to the bathroom every 15 or 20 minutes. He had, was having bladder issues. Um, and he said um, his business, he had been working as a school teacher, but he was trying to start a business on his own. Uh Um, He's uh like, uh he's like the things in my business. He's like, I can see now how within just a few months, maybe a year from now, now I'll be able to do, he's like all the cobwebs have been cleared away. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And so, you know, fertility was the main issue, you know, in his mind, but that really wasn't what the issue was. It was all these other things, all these subconscious compartments, they just weren't working together. Um, And now he feels like everything's working in harmony. That's kind of, those are the words that he used. He's like, I feel synchronized. Um, Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, (laughs) that's one in particular that stands out to me. Beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, so let's uh, plug your uh, your business now. The name of your business is Earthside Alternative. Okay. And um, if anybody would like to book with Rhonda, we have a Facebook page called SHM Practitioners. Rhonda's profile is on there, and uh, yeah, we all we all charge the same amount for uh, for SHM. And uh, that, that 
SHM practitioners lists uh, five or six practitioners who are all amazing, like uh, like Rhonda. And uh, yeah, feel free to uh, to look it over and see who you might like to work with. Thank you, thank Rhonda. You. That's great. Yeah, thank you. Let's go to Susan. Susan from Florida. Hi. And what's the name of your business, Susan? Back to Basic Wellness. Okay, great. And Susan is on the SHM Practitioners page also. So tell us a bit about your work with SHM. I have doing SHM since you shared it. And I have all success stories, but I have two in particular that I just am always bragging about. Mm -hmm. So you may have heard these stories before. One has to do with a fairly new client who was always irritable, difficult to be around. And this person is too young to be so irritable with life. We came up with, and I did this remotely, six splits and the exact ages corresponded with the traumas that this person was experiencing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was amazing. And what I like about doing this is once you release the emotions and the ages, you have the person's life right in front of you. So it's this is very private work. And the result is the very next day, this person was calm and happy. To me, this is a huge, huge event. And the other uh, hallelujah story, which is why I love this work, is I have one client in particular that I've been working with for a very long time. Very, very traumatized young person. Young, our age. And <laughs> they had but one split. But that split had five splits. Okay all from the same age. Wow. And again, I released emotions for each split and it was mind boggling. And this was a one-on-one -on -one session with this person. And they were very impressed with what came up. And the result was a month later, when she came to see me, she was calmer. Her, these are her words, lighter, and she released weight. Now, one of the issues we're working on is weight release. We've been re she'd been releasing a little bit here and there, but this was a significant chunk, like five pounds in one month. That's massive. And she hadn't been doing anything differently. But to release these emotions and to integrate these splits, to me, is just, they're miracles, absolute miracles. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. Super. Okay. So it's uh, definitely made a difference in your practice, hasn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. By the way, if anybody wants to learn more about the subconscious healing method, we do have um, a, a private Facebook group that you can ask, anyone can ask to join. And uh, we have basically all the information it, it's basically not for pay like in other words the learning the learning of it everything like that is free i don't charge for it i was guided to just give it as a gift and uh so you can learn it for free um it's uh, the the facebook page is called subconscious healing method and you can ask to join there are a few qualifying questions that we ask that you answer, like agreeing to the group rules and so on. And then, um, so you're not automatically accepted. There are, a few, there's a little hurdle there of the questions to answer. And then uh, you can join the group. There's um, over 200, I think 250 uh, members in the group now. And we're having uh, a lot of interesting discussions about how, how it works, new discoveries. We're, we're still finding new discoveries. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty deep subject, you know, the subconscious. There's a lot to, uh, a lot to learn, but we're getting better at it as we go. 
Okay, let's go over to Diane in Calgary, Alberta. Hey, Diane. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I love the subconscious healing method. And my first, um, shortly after uh, I was introduced to the subconscious healing method, um, I had an experience myself that I'd like to share. And I'm sure some of you have probably heard this story, but uh, it was just so profound to me uh, how much of a difference this could make. And that was even before we were doing uh, the um, empowerment, the activation and the whole, the whole part of it, right? Because it was still evolving at that time. And it was uh, last year in August, the August long weekend where I was outside and just cleaning up the yard. And um, I stepped over a probably a six inch retaining wall. It was very low, but there was a wasp's nest inside of it. And as I stepped over, uh, I kind of caught them in my eye. They were all coming. <laughs> It was like I disturbed this wasp nest and I got stung behind my left ankle. And uh, that was the most painful wasp sting I've ever had. I've been stung before and they, yeah, they hurt. Um, but this one was just it, so intense. It was just like real raw nerve pain. And my entire left foot was swollen right up to my toes. And um, I had done energy healing on myself throughout the week in between sessions and just a little bits here and there. And so that was, that was on the Monday. So by Friday, you know, my foot was feeling better, but not the swelling was still an issue. And uh, here I was at the end of the day, Friday, after having done my sessions for the day and putting my foot up yet again. And I thought, I'm going to do this subconscious healing method. I'm just going to see, you know, is, are there any splits there? And yeah, I did have some splits. So I worked on it and um went to bed, didn't really think anything of it. But the next morning I woke up and it was like, nothing had ever happened to my foot. It was completely gone. It was like, uh, I was like blown away, blown away. And I kept saying to my husband, look at my foot, look at my foot. Like, <laughs> he's like, I've seen your foot. <laughs> no, but really look at it. It's totally different. Right. And I was just, I was blown away. And that was right at the beginning. Yeah, that was totally at the beginning. Yeah, yeah just, yeah. The, just so, the integration took care of it, eh? Yeah, so yeah. It, it just was, um, yeah, it was amazing. And uh, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I certainly wasn't expecting, I wasn't expecting anything. I was just kind of mm -hmm. waiting, you know, being open-minded and seeing what would happen. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I was just, I was blown away. And um, yeah, since then, I mean, I've um, had, I have lots of, complex clients uh, and some of the people that really stand out to me I have a woman that I've been working with for probably at least four years now um, long long list of symptoms and issues and um, and it was only recently when we were looking at uh, some subconscious mind splits and you know kind of what I'm finding is I'm not sure that they always want to be revealed at that time Right. And so sometimes we'll go and there's certain splits and we'll work on those splits and then we come back and then there's other splits. I'm going to have to check the splits with the splits because that sounds pretty profound too. Um, but we did a session with her and honestly, it was the first time she just felt the energy well up in her abdomen and just, and start to flow up her body. And it, it was kind of hovering around the neck. I could feel it in my neck. And then finally, you know, we, I had talked her through this, like, okay, just breathe, let it go. It's releasing, let it do its thing. And it left. And she said, she's, she, that's the first time in a long time. She's actually felt such a shift and was feeling good after that. So that's just amazing. It was such a relief because previous sessions, it's like, oh, how are you feeling? Mm, no different, no different, no different. And yet it was such a good session. And it's like, all oh, this stuff came up and it was such a good session. But finally, it was, you know, doing this work that really helped to make that difference, which is just so amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also working with um, a fellow who had, uh, um, he was going into hospital a few years ago for triple bypass surgery. And um, he ended up having a double bypass surgery just with some work that we had done. So, um, but he'd also had uh, a stroke and a whole bunch of other things that, you know, complex again. Um, 
And we had done you know, a recent session on him uh, where one of the subconscious minds actually revealed a never to be released wall around his heart, as well as um, trauma compartments in his brain. And, um, and he's feeling better now too, as a result, felt that shift. Um, yeah, so able to walk more now without um, feeling the discomfort that he was feeling before. Um, yeah, so it's just, just hearing these things is just so amazing. And it's mm -hmm. so grateful for, for this discovery. It's just a beautiful thing to have discovered that. Um, and I use it, I use it in my sessions almost as foundational work, because like you, I feel that, you know, unless we're getting to that, those energies stored, I, you know, I kind of refer to them as containers, right? They're kind of in those containers and they're being stored away. We're not really getting to the, to the crux of it, right? And unless we ask about the subconscious mind splits. Um, so I feel that that's really, it's profound, it's foundational, really good work. And then the last one I wanted to share was, um, I worked with a lady who, um, just recently again have done a session and she describes that she feels more open to herself and others less withdrawn and just more at ease with coming forward with needs and, and questions to loved ones and uh she says i love it when i feel like a miracle <laughs> so it's like yeah so yeah that's about as good as it gets <laughs> yeah 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 and i did uh speaking of animals too i mean i did uh i work on i have four cats and i'm working on them all the time <laughs> And um, there was one situation, and it, this goes back years ago because my cat's now turning, uh, what's it going to be this year? Um, it's going to be 12 this year. And when he was five, so before getting into energy healing and really knowing that, you know, talking to your animal, right? Because he went through an experience where he had um, his cat that he was really attached to, his, his brother, his brother from another mother um but they were same the same age and um we ended up losing him at the age of five and just you know not not really recognizing the impact that it had on him at that time and you know he had a split because of that too and and being able to address that is just it's amazing because you know I can't go back right if I could go back I would do things differently and talk to him and share with him what was going on and and that kind of thing but having him to deal with this kind of on his own after the fact um you know breaks my heart and you know to be able to help him now uh in that way is just uh so it's such a blessing <laughs> <laughs> you love your cats i sure do they yeah, they've taught me they have taught me so much mm -hmm. i've learned so mm -hmm. much from them i'm so grateful yeah. Well, thank you, Diane. That's great. Yeah. Um, speaking of animals, I have a, a lovely dog and uh, she's always had a problem with other dogs um, in, uh, in the sense that she probably considers herself a human and, and above other dogs. So she's always been very, um, not just standoffish, but sometimes like, you know, uh, almost, almost aggressive with dogs, like to intimidate them when we're walking. So recently, um, I, and I will say this about SHM, it has really definitely brought my, my practice to another level and my ability to another level. Yeah. And after all these years of my dog, you know, being sort of embarrassing when we're walking, the way she is with other dogs, it occurred to me, you know, look into what, why, why is she like that? Like, don't just accept it. There's a reason why. And uh, through that intuition, I found that she had a belief that other dogs didn't like her. Mm. So she's been going around for years with this belief that other dogs don't like her. And so therefore she's responding According to the, to the belief. And since we cleared that, I'm telling you, it has gotten so much better. Her interactions with other dogs are civil. I'm not going to say they're super friendly, but at least she's civil, you know, and uh, it's, it's very rewarding. 
I could tell you so many stories about clients, though, who are benefiting from the work, um, especially people with families. They're they're referring their children, their their spouse, you know, and and it's it's fantastic. So this has been a super blessing for my 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 healing practice mm-hmm. and myself, mm-hmm. and all through um, this intuitive download I got last year that what if there's more than one subconscious mind going on in in the client you know and we're we found a way to access the hidden part you know and it's very easy uh, to do and and but profound in, in the results I've never seen results happen so fast you know as as I am now and I'm, I'm really happy to share it with you folks and uh, I'm see how your, you know, your practices are, are benefiting so much too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's uh, dozens of people who uh, are, are doing SHM now. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really good. And we're, you know, we're, we're asking that it, it spread out to all the people who, who need it, you know, who are open to it. And uh, yeah, it's a, a great blessing. Mm-hmm. Uh, are there any other uh, thoughts anyone would like to, to share before we uh, wrap up? Susan? Yep. While you were talking, it, it occurred to me, um, one of the things you had spoken about a long time ago was clearing someone's name. Yeah, yeah. I do that first session with all my new clients. Oh, great, great, great. And great. it is always an aha moment. Yeah, for everybody, mm. and it's just—it's an eye opener. And Chris, I just absolutely mm-hmm. love it. Yep. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Rhonda. Rhonda knows a lot about the name clearing, huh? <laughs> I do. You know, that was one of the first things we did together, isn't it? It sure is. Yeah, it was. One, I think it was in our first session together many, many, many years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. I did that recently with my um, my grandson too. He is on the spectrum. Yeah. And so we've been working a lot with the subconscious healing method with him. Oh boy. Um, and the difference in him is incredible. He's 12. Um, his focus is better. His frustration levels are, are much, much lower. Um, he has a lot of sensitivities to noise and changes in environment. And sometimes even clothing, you know, really bugs him. Um, and a lot of that has changed. But interestingly enough, after we were doing one of these sessions with him, I decided to check his name because his name has been bothering him okay. for a while. He's named mm-hmm. after himself, another family member, one of his grandfathers who is non-participatory now, mm-hmm. um, and his name has been bugging him. Okay. And so we cleared it. We cleared that portion of the name. Um, he was actually asking if he could legally have that portion of his name removed yeah 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 Um, yeah. but we cleared it instead i said let's try this first and see what happens we'll see how you feel afterward yeah um and he's decided that now he doesn't want to remove the name but that he's taken the meaning of the name as his own all right which has been a huge transformation for him um because the name means hard working and integrity and you know those types of things and he's like Uh so i'll take the meaning of the name not necessarily who i'm named for Um, and for him to make that connection is Mm. is huge um and it was all related to the subconscious healing method you know protocol sort of that we were checking off the things off the list so that was really really i think it's going to make a big difference for him down the road well now but down the road as well well you think when you're in school Kids will make fun of, of any name that's not standard, right? You know, right. And so, you know, you'll you'll get called names. So it, it does it 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 looms large for a lot of us, you know, as we're growing up in our formative years. You know, I've mm-hmm. I've got I've got a weird name, or you know, or whatever whatever mm-hmm. it is. And so yeah. that name attracts that negative energy. Yeah. You know, the the energy actually you know sticks to the to the name, and if we clear it that's a great burden off, you know, anybody. Mm-hmm. I haven't met anybody who had like a, a really healthy 
energy field around their name. Everybody's got something attached to it. Mm-hmm. So one, one way or the like other. Family names. Sure, the family name, you know, the yeah. whole thing. Like yeah. one John Smith and another John Smith, they'll have completely unique energies around the same name because of their, their, their life experience. So every, everybody's name can do, you know, be cleared. And that's just one session of work. You know, it, it may be part of a session, you know, it may only take part of a session, but it's really, as Susan says, you know, it's really valuable thing. And we have a whole list of other, what we call focused intentions in the subconscious healing method. So once the subconscious is healed and activated and, and fully working to, um, to do its job that it was designed to do, we can look at the other intentions such as clearing the name, clearing the energy of your word. I'll just just go into that one. I don't wanna go into all of them, of course, but the energy of your word is our word, our spoken word and our written word. The the words that come from us uh, has a certain energy level. In the past, people used to say things like, my word is my bond, or you have my word on that. And that used to be the measure of, you know, your integrity. You would say, you know, uh, we'll do it on a handshake, you know, and now uh, that's pretty much lost. But still, uh, each of us has um, a certain level of integrity to our word, which can be cleared up, you know, and uh, having a, an impeccable word is, is a great power and a great um, blessing in this world Mm -hmm. people know that they can rely on your word Mm -hmm. trust you and so Mm -hmm. on Mm -hmm. well i thank you so much for uh for sharing your your wonderful experiences with shm and once again i'll just recap that if anyone wants to learn about subconscious healing method There is a Facebook page, a private group that you can join. And for working with a practitioner, such as these wonderful ladies, uh, it is SHM Practitioners. That's an open Facebook group. Anybody can go on there and see the profiles. And uh, that's where where we'll uh, we'll end tonight. And I thank everybody for uh, for tuning in to, uh, to learn about this and hopefully you may be inspired to give it a try. So we'll just, uh, I thank, thank the uh, folks who participated tonight. Thank you all. And uh, as always, we give thanks to our divine creator in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Take care, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye.